This is Monument Circle, and in the middle is the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, which is Indianapolis's most well-known landmark. Indianapolis is sometimes referred to by the nickname of the Circle City, and this is the circle that has given Indianapolis that nickname. Indianapolis is the capital of Indiana and is the state's largest city. Downtown Indianapolis has some cool things to go do and see, as you would expect for a city of its size. Despite the increase in crime that Indianapolis has been seeing, downtown continues to be a place where people want to live, work, and play, and it shows by the ongoing construction of new residential units. Well, let's get to it, shall we? I do start the video along Kentucky Avenue southwest of downtown. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, I usually speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time. You can always keep up with the real time that it takes me to drive in the lower left corner of the screen. If I'm going too fast for you or if you think that I'm going too slow, you can always adjust the playback speed by selecting the gear icon if you're watching on PC or by selecting the three dotted menu if you're watching on a mobile device. Isn't YouTube great? Also really quick, as if you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos out with the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. If you enjoy this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the playlists that are featured on my channel. You might enjoy my USA Large City Downtown playlist, my Indianapolis playlist, or my Indiana playlist. As we approach Lucas Oil Stadium, aka the house that Peyton Manning built, Indianapolis has become a great NFL town. The Colts franchise was brought to Indianapolis from Baltimore in 1984, and they first played in the Hoosier Dome, which is no longer standing. When it first happened, not many people expected the Colts to do as well as they have here. Reasons for that is that Indianapolis in the 1980s was given the nickname of Naptown. Some people would also say, Indiana no place. Indy got the nickname of Naptown because downtown used to be really dull and sleepy. All of the rest Restaurants and shops closed their doors at 6 and there was no nightlife or entertainment. You can honestly thank the man that there's a statue of right there for changing not only the sports scene of Indianapolis but the economy and the entertainment options that are now offered in downtown. Even if the Colts never acquired Peyton Manning, it's likely that Indianapolis would still have some kind of entertainment options in 2020 as every city in the country is seeing their downtowns thrive. However, Peyton Manning unquestionably gave downtown a boost as he was a once in a generation talent at quarterback that made the Colts relevant in Indianapolis after the franchise sucked really bad for the first 10 years in the city. It made people want to come to downtown Indianapolis and spend their money. The impact Peyton Manning had on Indianapolis and the Colts franchise is kind of like what you're currently seeing with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, minus the factor of improving the economy of downtown as the Kansas City Chiefs play in a stadium off of an interstate highway in the suburbs. Last but not least, I must say that Tom Brady is better than Peyton Manning. Hoo <laughs> that one stings, doesn't it, Indianapolis? I mean, it's true though, Tom Brady is better. Peyton Manning only gave the city one championship. <laughs> all right, all right, relax, Indy. I'm just having fun with you. This is the Wholesale District, which has been added to the National Register of Historic Places. Back in the day when railroads were more relevant, Union Station brought people into downtown. In case you couldn't tell, the tunnel that we just went through had railroad tracks above it. This district historically was full of grocery stores and markets. It used to be where all of the activity was in the city's younger days. Today, many of the storefronts have transitioned into restaurants and bars, while the upper level units of the buildings continue to be apartments and condos. There's also plenty of places along this stretch of South South Meridian that offers some good nightlife, and it's probably the best nightlife that you'll find in Indianapolis. So even today it's still full of activity, but uh, in a much different way than historic times. As we continue to drive through downtown, you'll see some boarded up windows on some of the buildings. You saw some back there and there's some right here on the left. The reason for that is because of the economic impacts of the pandemic and Indianapolis was one of the many cities in the country to experience violent riots in the response to George Floyd's death. During the riots in Indianapolis, cars were set on fire and windows were shattered. As you can see in the video, however, you can feel safe when you visit downtown Indianapolis as there are still plenty of things to go do and see. We'll have to wait and see, however, on what kind of 
of long-term effect the pandemic has on not just downtown Indianapolis, but downtown every city. Well, it looks like this party's having a blast. Good for them. A little more booze, though, might get the blood flowing a little bit quicker and might get them to pedal a little bit faster. Bottoms up! This is Monument Circle, and in the middle is the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, which is Indianapolis' most well-known landmark. Indianapolis is sometimes referred to by the nickname of the Circle City, and this is the circle that has given Indianapolis that nickname. My first job out of college was in a building off of this circle, so for me this place will always be special. I'll be driving towards the circle from a different angle again later in the video. On North Meridian to the left you just have your regular office buildings and on the right are state government buildings. I think that this goes without saying for the people that are from here, however if you're not from here you might not know. This town is basketball crazy. Not just this town, but the whole state of Indiana. 11 out of the 12 largest capacity high school basketball gyms are located in Indiana. Now the gyms rarely fill up to full capacity during games, but it's something that these Hoosiers are absolutely proud of. They're like freaks, tracking down these high school aged basketball players. It's weird to see so many grown men talk about and critique high schoolers as much as these people do. Okay, okay, I'll admit, that was a mean joke. This city also loves their college hoops. Indiana University, or IU, is located an hour southwest of Indy, and Purdue is located about an hour or so northwest of Indy. Butler University is in town, and they're good sometimes, and IUPUI, or Uwe Pewey, can also be entertaining once in a while. For the next 10 minutes or so of me driving around, you'll see several newer residential buildings, starting with this one on the right. As a whole, Indianapolis is home to an estimated 876,000 residents, making it the 17th largest city in the U.S. The metro area is home to just over 2 million, making it the 33rd most populated metro area in the U.S. In Indianapolis, the median household income is $46,000 per year, compared to $62,000 nationally. 20% of the residents live in poverty, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $130,000. 30% of adults 25 and older hold at least a bachelor's degree compared to 35% nationally, so that number isn't too bad. Make sure to drop a like for that amazing insight. However, the crime rates for the city might blow some of your minds as Indianapolis has continued to grow in crime consistently over the last 10 years or so. The violent crime rate for Indy is 1,273 for every 100,000 residents, which is nearly four times the national average rate of 382 for every 100,000 residents. There were 171 homicides in Indianapolis for the year of 2019, and in 2020, we've seen the violence spike everywhere in the U.S., and it wouldn't surprise me if that number is higher when 2020 is concluded. You people in Indy need to stop assaulting and robbing each other, and killing each other. Come on now. Heard this beat in my dream.
On the left past the Steak and Shake headquarters is Bankers Life Fieldhouse, home of the Pacers. The Pacers have been an above average franchise in the NBA for decades now and have a pretty nice home arena. The face of the franchise will forever be Reggie Miller probably until they can win a championship, that's if they ever do. This town talks about Reggie Miller like he's Michael Jordan or something, even though he never brought Indiana a championship. Alright, alright, I know that didn't settle well with some of you, but it's true. I don't know of another city that has pro sports teams that puts an individual athlete on such a pedestal that's never won a championship. All right, relax, Indy sports fans. It's just fun to mess with you. Here's one last close-up of the statue of Peyton Manning. Other things that make Indianapolis a sports town is that the NCAA corporate offices are located in downtown. The city often holds the Big Ten basketball tournaments and other March Madness games due to its central location in the country. Obviously, the Indy 500 is often referred to as the largest single-day sporting event in the world as the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is capable of holding crowds of up to 400,000 people. Not good for social distancing, but good for other times when we're not dealing with a worldwide pandemic. Indianapolis's economy depends largely on these sporting events and other conventions that are held at the Indiana Convention Center, which is directly to the right. The hotel that's on the left was constructed in 2011 and is the tallest hotel in Indiana. It was constructed to handle the madness that came with hosting the Super Bowl in February of 2012. Let me tell you with first-hand experience that it was absolute madness. One of the most exciting things to happen for the city was hosting the Super Bowl. All of the streets in downtown Indy were blocked off to vehicle traffic and luckily, the weather was 70 degrees for most of the weekend, which rarely happens in Indianapolis or anywhere as far north as Indy is. That's another thing that I will always remember about Indianapolis because during that time, I applied to be a security guard for the Super Bowl, which allowed me to see those crowds firsthand all week long. During game day, I was able to work on the field for the entire game for round two of Eli Manning versus Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. So as much as I like to make fun of Indianapolis and the whole sports scene, I do owe it a little bit, I guess. The top five employers in Indy in the following order are IU Health University Hospital, St. Vincent Hospital, Eli Lilly, IU School of Medicine, and Roche Diagnostics.
heard this beat in my dream. Now, when I lived here several years ago, West Market Street looked nothing like it does today. It was full of parking lots that were hardly ever used and boarded up single-story buildings. Indy's done a great job rebuilding this couple of blocks. I think it goes without saying that up ahead is the Indiana State Capitol building. Now to the right is Indy's lone famous restaurant called St. Elmo's Steakhouse. Illinois Street is the only street that I didn't drive on for this video, but I attached a Google Street View image of the building. Once again, it's only a few buildings down to the right of where we currently are, and that's where most of the famous sports people go when they come visit town, whether it's an opposing team playing the Colts, an opposing team playing the Pacers, or people here for the NFL Combine. That's where people go. Now we're going by the Circle Center Mall. It's a great idea for a mall, but over time it slowly began to deteriorate and retail stores have left the mall. Now it's slowly becoming a strong hotspot for crime.
This is once again another view of the newer residential buildings along Market Street that have really uplifted the east end of downtown. Right above the intersection of Washington and Illinois is the Indianapolis Arts Garden, which provides for a nice streetscape. On the right is the Indiana Repertory Theater and Roof Ballroom. Well, I just showed you about 80% of downtown Indianapolis. There is a street closure on Massachusetts Avenue, or Mass Ave, and that was to allow more seating for the restaurants along Mass Ave, as the pandemic was still going on while filming this video and restaurants were just opening up, and that was a popular thing for cities to do everywhere. And I also know that some of you will get mad at me if I don't mention Victory Field, which is home to Indy's minor league baseball team, the Indians, and that ballpark is on the left. I am crossing the White River, which serves as the western border for downtown Indianapolis. Indianapolis, and there's also the Indy Canal, which serves as a popular walking path for people in the city. I do end the video up ahead at the Indianapolis Zoo, which provides a perfect ending with a nice view of the downtown skyline. If you enjoy my videos, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe, as doing all of those things helps these videos out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. And if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the other playlists that are featured on my channel. You might enjoy my Indianapolis playlist, my Indiana playlist, or my large USA cities downtown playlist. We'll see you next time. Peace!